start, when we stop, we gon' we gon' get it done. Get it when we start, we gon' get it done. Start when we stop, we gon' we gon' get it done. Welcome back, everybody, to another incredible episode of the Expert Trader Podcast Series. We have an incredible guest in the house today. Well, I'm actually in his house. I'm here with Anthony's World. He's uh, showed us a lot of great hospitality here in his office. We're in this beautiful Scottsdale office of... It's a vibe, right? It is a super vibe. He's got cars hung up on the wall. We have a brand new Rolls Royce calling in behind us. Anthony, thanks for the hospitality. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely. All right, so that was a pretty long intro, and we have a live crowd behind us, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable, uh, but I think we're going to have an incredible podcast. You're a little nervous? Me? The a lights, little bit. I think lights. you're making me nervous. Okay. All right. Well, Anthony, this, is, this is the couch. <laughs> <laughs> this, is you guys, this is it. You guys recognize the couch. All right. It's been a... <laughs> well, everybody who watches this show knows. They know. All right, so it's been about eight months since we last talked. Do you want to catch us up about what's been happening since the summit? What are you up to these days? What you got going on? Yeah, so um, we, me, well, Q and I and Nick and all of us, um, just really trying to take things to the next level. We're trying to to weave out the um, the bullshit of the industry. Um, we're working with a quite a few companies. Um, like I just showed you an app that we're working on to where traders can come in, connect. It's kind of like I would say the Twitter for traders. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be like really. I'm hoping it's gonna be really big. We'll see what happens. We're growing at a pretty good rate right now. We'll be announcing officially the release soon. Um, You've also seen a lot of uh, funding companies, you know, not doing the, the right thing per se. And so us with top tier, you know, what we're trying to do is just make sure we're doing the right thing, constantly having growth, um, constantly helping traders and constantly just trying to set the industry right and set the standard right for these new traders. Because um, a lot of these uh, funding companies, they took what they had and they were like, let me just get massive amounts of sales and then end up getting fucked at the end mm -hmm. of the day because they don't know how to. To run a business. So what we want to do is we want to come in and show people how to actually run a business because now if you look at us, we um, we have a tech providing team that's overseas that has about 300 employees. We here in the States have about 56 employees. And so we're really just trying to show like this is a business. This is not some some kid trying to act rich or flex on the internet. Like this is a business and you treat it like a business. We have full CEOs, COOs, CFOs, they're all older than us. <laughs> you know, we have, you know, a board, we have everything. We have three offices now. So it's really, really trying to dive in and show that this is a business, not not some rich kid trying to be on the internet flexing. So what does is, what is doing the right thing mean to you? So you're saying that you guys are trying to do the right thing in the industry. What does that look like? Uh, setting the example. You know, um, when we started, we were just a bunch of kids. Like, you know, I've been in the industry now for shit what, eight, nine years. So it's like I was 20, 19, 18 years old. And so for us, it's like, as I've grown and, and matured in my, my life and my business and my age, it's like, damn, like when I was just trying to come up, I was just trying to get your bag. I was trying to make some money. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I was just trying to make money just like everyone else is, right? Thinking that trading, you can come in and get rich really quick. No, but it's like, it's time to like set the example of like, you need to treat this like a nine to five, like, cause no matter what, like you see all of us and yeah, like sometimes we have those good days where we do make a hundred grand a day, make 200 grand a day, 300 grand a day. But in reality, if you can make a hundred grand a year trading, you're doing fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. You are doing phenomenal in this industry and um, it's just a matter of time. So using the right resources and using everything and just showing people that, you know, there is a right way to do this. I think that's really important. I think a lot of people have this perspective of trading that it's all about the riches. It's all about short-term wealth. It's all about the supercars. But what you just said was really important. Even if you're making only, well, I don't say only, but if, if you're making six figures a year from trading, that's still phenomenal. It's over eight grand a month. Mm -hmm. um, so what is top tier really doing to help traders and to really kind of push the ball forward? We're, we're setting the example right. And um, like what I mean by that is we're not trying out here to to massively uh, promote m crazy sales. What I've noticed in the industry is that it's a race to the bottom. Mm. I'm just being honest with you. It's a race to the bottom and only the strong will survive. Go, go into that a little bit. What does that mean? Because I've seen that like a lot of these companies, like they don't realize that what the cost of actually running these promos are. You know, when you start running, like I, I just saw a company do 100% profit. How the fuck does that make any sense? And if anyone... Like, like, how does a company make money if they're sharing, if they're giving up 100% of the profits? So you're giving up your money so that another person keep it all? Think about it. Use your head. Like, it doesn't make sense. And so, yeah, you can go and get funded by these companies, but when they fail, you're not going to get your money because they're not going to be able to pay you out, right? And so 
And like there, there's just a lot of real like algorithms and stuff. And I have to watch what I say because it's a lot of proprietary technology. But it's like as far as it comes to backing people and stuff like that, like like I have to make money. Mm-hmm. Or goddamn, yeah, Willie, <laughs> um, yeah, Billy the Ghost back there. But like at the end of the day, like this is a business for me, right? This is a business. I'm here to help people make money as well as myself make money. So if I'm not making money doing it, why would I do it? Why would I put myself at risk? I'm not going to sit here in front of a, a bulldozer picking up pennies, you know, on the way to when there's dollars up there. You for know sure. what I mean? So I'm not here to pick up the pennies. I'm here to pick up the dollars. So that, what should people be really looking for in a prop firm? So if you're on the other side of the table and you're looking for a prop firm, what are like the top two, three, four things that you're looking for? Accountability. Number one, accountability. Like, I believe, like, do you know the owners? Who they are? Who's, who's behind it? Because... I can tell you right now, for me, I'm the person that's going to like, I'm going to put my name out there. It's going to be solid. It's going to work and it's going to be good. Um, Number two, don't go for the companies that have the 100% payouts and stuff like the crazy sales like that because it doesn't work. Like it just doesn't make sense for the business owner. Um, They're not making money. They're not going to do it. So what's the danger for them? If they're not making money, then they're going to close down down. and then they're not going to be able to pay anybody out. Yeah. So anyone that's offering those things is based, like like you said, it's a race to the bottom. Yeah, it's a race to the bottom. And that's like, we do occasionally the promos um, and we try and, you know, give a good refund and we try and make sure that, you know, 90%, because we've learned that even at 10%, we can make enough money. It's sustainable for us. Um, um, but the reality is it's not sustainable long-term all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For sure. So for us, like we found that really good, that really good zone is for us to take 20% of the profit. Perfect. So, I mean, this is a trading podcast. Let's talk about trading a little bit. How Let's have you seen trading it. change in the past however many years that you've been in the, involved in this? Have you seen trading change or is it just the same game, just different faces? It's the same game. Um, I've been talking about this a lot on a lot of my little videos that I've been doing. And uh, I was just talking to Derek the other day about it too. And we we're talking, I was just like, dude, is it just me or is just trading really fucking easy? And he was like... He was like, it, it's kind of easy once you know it. Like once you know it, but it's all about the the consistency. I literally pull up my phone 50 to 100 times a day and scroll through the charts. And I've done that for seven years. Like you just start to recognize patterns. And um, once you start doing it, and it's all mental and all mindset. If As long as you're not over leveraging massively, doing crazy things, like trading is quite simple. Stick to your plan, make it happen, go with it. Roll with it. Like it's it's really not that hard. So kind of like looking back at when you were struggling and trading, and then now where you are now, what would you say the difference is? Like are like what leads to the confidence? Is it just experience? You've seen so many different patterns. You've seen so many trades, or is it like the is it the money aspect? Your relationship with money? What do you think has allowed you to reach that new level? Definitely, um, my relationship with money. Um, I would say that's number one. Um, anyone that is coming into this industry trying to make money really fast because you have to pay your bills, you're not going to make money in this industry doing that. Mm -hmm. I am so far unattached from money. Like money is the furthest thing on my mind at any given moment, any given time. So when I'm sitting here looking at a chart, which is also a dangerous place to be sometimes because sometimes I'll be like, oh, damn, I'm only up 50 grand. I should probably, you know, back in the day, I'd close it. Now I'm like, eh, fuck it, just let it run. And then it hits my stop loss of profit. (laughs) So like it's also a dangerous place. But um, I believe in having multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why, like, I love this industry and that's why I've built businesses inside of this industry. And I want to continue building business inside of this industry. I don't want to sit in front of a screen and trade every day, but I do know that I can sit in front of the screen and one day a week and just look at my phone and find one good trade and do really well and make a hundred grand a week. Do you still manually trade or are you doing only EAs now? No, I manually trade. Okay. Can we talk about the difference between both? What's your pros and cons for both? Um, for me, if I'm manually trading, I will over leverage a little bit. I will have fun with it um, because I'm in control. Mm-hmm. I know how to hedge. I know how to get in and out of positions. I know how to do it. I know how to take what I'm taking. I know what I'm willing to lose. Um, and I know like I'm confident. Like I always like, I've always been the guy like put it on my back. I'm good. I got it. I'll keep going. I'm okay. going to make it out of this. Um, so that's a really good, um, you know, manually trading is really good. Um, but what I've learned is that I, I do have quite a few EAs that I work with and I like them. But the thing is, is everyone wants these EAs to make them crazy amounts of money and retire them. No, my EAs, 2% a month max, like 3% a month. 
Which like, is still <clears> good. I mean, depending on the, the, the size you're working with, but good. that's still and, But like for good. us, that's consistency. Like we're consistently trying to go for that right. You know, the biggest hedge fund in the world right now um, does about 64% a year. 64 to 68% a year. Sheesh, that's still really good for hedge funds. Really good money. Um, but the thing about it is, is like we're going for half that just mm -hmm. because I want consistent money. I want consistent gains. For and sure. so I know that if I have enough capital, I can and do that. Yeah, anyone that's promising to double your money on a month by month or these crazy percentages, that's typically a scam. Even so I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah. Even like 10, 20% a month, like it's not sustainable. I've been in this industry sure. a long, long time and I have never seen someone never in the days that I've been trading. And, and if someone will prove me wrong, I will give you a hundred million dollars to trade with. I have never seen someone for two years in a row make more than 7% a month. <coughs> never. Consistently, every single month, make 7%. Challenge accepted. Is that $100 million? <coughs> I'll, I'll fund you. You're my witness. <coughs> I'll fund you $100 million. 7% a month for two years? Consistently, every for month. For 100 mil? Yeah. I'll do you that. Can, you can prove it. I'll do it. But I've never seen it. Don't there's a, um, there's a method. There's a, it's called the, um, this, this, uh, this, this major bank put out a, um, put out a test. And I will um, find the link for you before you leave so we can drop in the video. And they literally will give someone a billion dollars if it can pass this test, but it's never been done. What's the test? It's some, it's something related to do with Forex and it's making more than, it's like going and back testing and doing like more than 50% a year for like 10 years. Okay. Well, yeah, if you're doing more than 50% a year for 10 years, you probably but deserve it's, it's that. It's ridiculous, billion. but it's like something, but it's never been, it's never been completed. Yep. Never been completed. There's probably only and like so four hedge funds that can do those kinds of numbers. They, they, those still don't even do it. Whew. So there's a lot of uh, stuff, statistics behind it. So that's why I like now, like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I have my fund and my account flips and like, I'm going to fucking try and go balls to the walls and make a hundred grand. Like I you know I had an, I had a trade yesterday that was like, logically speaking, I had 170 <laughs> grand in the account and I made 130 grand on one day. That is not fucking logical, <laughs> but I was willing to lose all 170 grand. But that goes to your, to your risk tolerance. Like if you're willing to lose exactly. the money, nobody can fuck. tell you that that's irresponsible risk or that's not responsible. It's like, if you're willing to lose the money- Yeah, because I'll put 10 more- your risk. I'll put 10 more accounts like that up and I promise you I'll do it once. <laughs> you know what I mean? There we like go. I will do it. So let's talk about investing a little bit because I know that we're kind of short on time trying to make the most of this podcast real quick. Absolutely. Let's talk about investing. So let's say some folks did get funded and they're starting to get some payouts. What are, what are some ways that you've been able to invest some of the money from trading that has helped you in your life and has kind of allowed you to continue this lifestyle? Um, I like personally, I like investing in people. Um, mm. I like finding people that have good ideas and they're willing to put the work in. So my big thing is I've, I've invested in people and those have paid off. Um, but traditional, I would say, um, I just like building business. I don't like investments that much. Um, me, me, Nick and Q did just, I don't know if I can say this or not, but we just bought part of Manscaped. Um, oh, damn. Back. Um, that was a really good investment. Congratulations. And um, very small part. I just want to go ahead and make that very small part. <laughs> very, still, very small part. It's still a piece. Did. It still um, counts. But um, life insurance policies, um, learning infinite banking, those are very good. Um, very, very good. Especially if you're worth um, a good bit of money, you can actually like leverage the bank's money to make you more money. It's, it's quite incredible. Um, that's something that we've invested in heavy. Um, but investing in our people and our companies and our time, um, like that's really been, cause I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in no one's gonna work harder for you than you. So what we've done is we've put people in our companies to manage them to where we don't have to, so that me and Q and Nick can go out and find investments, find companies to create and find ways to build companies. And then we just put people in place to keep running them. Perfect. What can people expect from you in the next couple of years? You know, the, the industry's changing very quickly. There's so many regulations coming in, all this stuff. Where do you see yourself in a couple of years? Where do you see, you know, top tier and some of the other things you're working on? Um, well, with top tier, definitely we have a few cool new products coming. Um, you see, we got the that we do have some product, some really cool products. We obviously we wait. Have can I make the announcement real quick? Yeah. Mid podcast, ladies and gentlemen, top tier will be the main sponsor of the FX Summit 2023 conference this year in Miami. Let's go! Just want baby. to let you guys know. Hey. <laughs> Conrad, cut was, that out I of the was, podcast. I was trying to do the fist bump, dog. I was trying to do the fist, fist bump. bump. <laughs> and that was all like... Yeah, Trey, yeah, CGI, yeah. CGI that <laughs> handshake into like a perfect handshake. Yeah. We'll do it after and then we'll just CGI it. That's, the thumbnail, <laughs> that's your thumbnail right there. All right. I love it. All right, so we've talked about a few things. We talked about the difference between automated uh, trading and manual trading. We talked about what to do with your trading profits and how to invest your money in order to kind of keep uh, wealth growing for you. 
Those have been some pretty interesting things, but I think that a lot of people want to know from your perspective as someone who is operating a, a prop firm, what are some things that you could tell traders that you're seeing them consistently do to be like, hey, get back on the right track or here's the thing that you guys are always doing? Um, in reality, majority of traders are just rushing the process. And, and we got Grant right here. He, he interviews on a weekly basis, sees everything. Um, if you want to hop in real quick and just give them one quick tip of advice that you see on a, on a really good you know, basis. But for me, what I've seen is that people just rush the process. Okay. They, pa they pass phase one and then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I passed phase one. Yep. Let me go balls to walls and try and pass phase two. And then they end up failing. It's like you have double the time. Like, chill. Can I throw a question to Grant real quick? Yeah. So what have you seen consistently traders do right? And what have you seen consistently traders do wrong when it comes to this stuff? Um, when it comes to prop firms or just trading in general? Well, I hope everyone has told the truth. That's the number one thing. So if they're not telling me everything, then they need to start with them. Mm. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people and traders out there that, you know, they don't actually, they're not actually, you know, putting out exactly what they did or what happened or you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say, number one, be real with yourself. Um, because I've had people where they're like, well, I don't really want to talk about this that I did wrong. I'm like, no, you need to talk about it. That transparency is really important because then you hold yourself accountable, right? Mm. So then I would say that number one, because a lot of times too, people have, they've, uh, you know, they've passed, they've gotten paid out or whatever, and then they lost the funded account. And then, you know, they don't want to talk about it. So talk about it, be real with yourself. We've all been there. Yeah. All right. We've all blown accounts. I've blown yeah. many a funded accounts. And that's the whole thing is like getting the funded account seems to be like a challenge for people. Really getting the account is just the first part. Like maintaining the account is the, is the real challenge there. So right. I'm really glad you spoke on kind of being honest because when people lie to themselves, I guess they can't make that progress. Yep. Super yep. dope. Um, is there anything you want to say to piggyback on that? Is there anything that you're seeing from traders? Like, t are there any problems that traders are having today that they weren't having four or five years ago? Because um, things are changing so much. They're exposed to so much information. Is um, it different one thing nowadays? that I've seen is that everyone blames the system and uh, like they think it's all right. Like this whole mm -hmm. like, Thing is like, oh, this person's out to get you. This this place is out to get you. This prop firm, this broker, everyone's out to get the traders. And like, instead of like just sitting there and like, honestly, he said, holding yourself accountable, um, they're trying to find ways to manipulate the system. Mm. Like we've seen it, especially with top tier. They'll come in and they'll be like, they'll be like, oh yeah, I, we we don't allow this, we don't allow that, and they'll be like, they'll place a trade, and the trade will literally last ten seconds long, but it will last during a news event. And it's like, I want to be real. How am I supposed to copy your trade that is 10 seconds long? There's no logic behind that. I, I can't do it. So and people so gaming the system is one of those things. And because they're gaming the system, they're never going to get the real they're result. They're never going to get the real result. Because mm. until you can become real with yourself inside of the trading world and making it just very consistent, you're just like, you're, everyone's always trying to find that little cheat code, that mm -hmm. hack. It, it doesn't exist in trading. Yep. I've been in this industry a long time. It doesn't, ex it doesn't exist. The right Cons decision's always the hardest one. Mm. Consistency. Can you, can you expand on that a little bit? What does that mean? The right decision, like, For, like the decision well, to close a trade or open a trade, or do you just mean all trading decisions? I mean, everything in life. Mm. The hardest decision is usually the right one. Because if not, like I said earlier, you're lying to yourself, then you're gonna keep lying to yourself to make yourself feel better because you don't want to be embarrassed in front of anyone. That vulnerability of being wrong and admitting it and doing it, that's the only way you're gonna be able to move forward in anything in life, but especially trading because this, this industry that we're in with, with Forex is so magnifying on everything to yourself. So if you're mm. gonna lie about yourself to yourself, you're gonna do it to everyone else and you're never gonna get actually anywhere. Wow. Yeah, big facts. That was, that was heat. <laughs> <laughs> he said big facts. the right choice is usually the hardest one. That was, that was really good. Um, how are we doing on time? 10 more minutes? Oh, we're good. We're chilling. We're chilling. I'm here like wrapping up my last few questions. I'm having a great time. <laughs> we got the man over there. Uh, Jason, you want to come in here? Guys, we have a special guest. We have a lot of special guests. We got Tori Trades behind the camera here. We got QB Stew behind the camera here. Like some WWE, tap me in. Yeah. <laughs> tap me in. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Jason Stewart, AKA QB Stu, What's professional up, football yes, sir, trader, yes, D1 hey, All-American. Peep, peep that hat though. Yes, sir. Peep that hat. Fresh live drip. live an icon, baby. Live an icon. There you, it is. You know you're with Anthony when you walk into the merch 
building and he says, grab whatever you want. And he just says, grab the hat. He's got, he says, the chef is taking care of everything. Don't worry. Yeah, dude. Get the food, get the beer, get the So get you the don't got to tell me twice. No, actually, I want to tell a quick story since we're on the podcast, but I'm talking to Anthony and we, we're just talking about logistics for, you know, we're here in Arizona shooting a, a workshop. We're doing a whole live workshop. Hundreds of people are going to show up. We're going to be educating a ton of folks. Anthony's like, oh, I think I'm going to get a private jet to go to Dallas the next day. Yeah. It's a one day trip, guys. We're there for four hours, maybe four hours. And so that's just kind of uh, what being around Anthony is like in case you guys wanted a live view. Yeah. It's like this in person too. Conrad. <laughs> Conrad's behind him though. He's, he's Everybody like, there can attest. Everyone's just like, nodding. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I like to full send things. He doesn't, hang, he doesn't hang pictures on the walls. He hangs cars on the walls. <laughs> and he's like, nah, nah, we're taking the PJ tomorrow. I said, peanut butter jelly sandwich. He's like, he's like, well, 14 <laughs> seats. Um, um, we're having fun. We live in dog. We live in. So uh, I actually want to get back to something that I feel like is important since I have both of you guys here. Uh, you said that you were trying to clean up the industry. What are some of like the most toxic things that you're seeing today that folks should just be wary of and to, I don't say stay away from, but basically stay away from. Um, what I'm really seeing a lot of right now in this industry is that like at the end of the day, it's really easy to like buy a, a Lamborghini, mm -hmm. right? It's just easy. But like, what do they have? that's keeping them alive, like sustaining the energy, sustaining their money, sustaining their income. So what I want to do is I want to teach people how you don't have to, like, like at the end of the day, like the, like a Conan, it, you can get one of those for like 30, 40 grand down and like six grand a month if you want to. Oof. And you get to write the whole payment off. Like it's super, like it's super beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is though, what I'm really thinking about is like, I want to um, teach people how to sustain and like maintain, like I almost want to start like a, like a Forex guru management company. <laughs> like, like show people like how to like actually build companies, how to build businesses because you have all these kids coming into the industry and they're making tons of money. Mm -hmm. but they don't know how to utilize it the right way. Like me and Q, like what I can say that, and, and honestly, if it wasn't for Nick, I like a lot of, you know, hats on the backs for Nick or claps, whatever yeah, it is, yeah. mad respect for Nick. Like he came in in that corporate world and gave us this corporate side of things, showing us how to run companies, showing us how to build teams. You know, now we, we like I said, we have all these different aspects and some people don't want them, but like these kids are not realizing that they're only 24 years old. Like you're 24 years old and you have five supercars. Like dog, get your shit straight. Like I don't yeah. care how much money you're making. Yeah. Like I can't even, I can't even justify them that. Mm -hmm. And like, I know how much money I make. I can't justify that. Like I don't, I don't need it. You don't need it. Number one. And so like, and like, it's just not logical for, for these kids to, to maintain that lifestyle because they're going to get so burnt out. And I've been there. I've been to the point where like, like even for trading, but like making a hundred grand a day is so nonchalant to me. Back in the day, I would have been like, we're going out, we're partying all this. <laughs> and like, instead we sat here and listened to music. Right. Mm. Like it's so nonchalant. So like you having all these supercars, you're going to burn your life out mm -hmm. before you're even 30. And it's like, that's not a where you want to be because like, you have to have something to strive for, something to go for, especially, you know, as, as any type of trader. But as, as men, I think like you're always wanting to push that next boundary, that next level, because like men are just natural conquerors and that's what they want to do. So these kids need to learn, like, slow the fuck down, mm -hmm. slow down, enjoy the process, save your money and, and, and build something that's sustainable long term. And that's like, that's what I want to give back. And I want to teach that to the industry. Super dope. Really, really important. On the flip side is like, what do you guys think that that culture does for traders? Like they're seeing everybody with uh, like irresponsible money habits and things like that. So it's like, what do you think that does for traders uh, to see somebody with five supercars and think like, oh, that's what I need to do with my money. It's like, as soon as I get my first hundred K, I'm going to go put 30 down or 40 down on a car. Uh, what do you think that's doing for traders? And how can people kind of look for a better example? I mean, I... I Go ahead. I'm gonna oh, no, no, you're good, bro. <laughs> I mean, even to, I feel like that all ties in, even with the last question is like the found, it all comes back to the foundation of what people are even getting into it in the first place for. Uh, I agree with you, bro. Like when I got into trading early, I just was looking to make more than I was making at Target. So it wasn't <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to make seven figures in a day. The very first time I got involved, I just remember making $7 and that's how much I was basically making an hour. So when I realized I could just supplement my income pressing buttons versus having to clock in, that's the freedom that we really want, bro. Like the fact that you can hop on a PJ any day and go wherever you want. 
that's really the Grand Theft Auto freedom <laughs> that people want, bro. It's because life is a video game and you're the main mm -hmm. character and God is my director. So it's like, that's the foundation that I have. And I completely agree when people burn themselves out with things that can be destroyed. So if you're always worried about materials, those things can be destroyed. It's like the pharaohs, what, what did they do? They tried to bury themselves with all their wealth and now people are uncovering it and it's still right there, sitting there. So... I mean, the foundation is everything, bro. Like, people just need the right morals, integrity, and to want to get into trading for the right reason. And for me, it's always been about impacting others, my family, just giving back and stuff like that. So We talked about this yesterday on uh, at the DMV workshop in D.C. I was mentioning how you told me once that even when you were making 40 grand a month, how you were still living under a certain amount. You were still living mm -hmm. under three grand or four grand a month. Yeah. That was one of the most helpful pieces that I found out because back then I wasn't making anywhere close to that. And then as I started to kind of get up in those levels, I was like, I don't need to start, you know, buying everything that I can. What if I was smart and I kind of thought a little bit longer term? And that's something I'm kind of gaining from you guys, which is why you've been able to, I think, and why you guys have been able to build so much momentum. Because mm -hmm. I feel like you guys live way below your means. We talk about this Massively. all the time. Massively. Everyone's like, oh, they're, you know, Anthony and Q are buying all these cars. It's like, if you guys knew how many cars these guys could really buy if they wanted, if we to, wanted to, spend we'd all have our a conversation. Money, <laughs> if we wanted to spend all our money, it would be like wild. Cause, but like- It'd be like that little Wayne MTV Cribs video. Fast and the Furious with, with the 50 bro. cars outside. <laughs> right. like, like to put it in perspective, like, you know, like Nick and they put us on salaries. Mm -hmm. like, like we don't even like, we don't even get to touch our money, money really. Like that's literally how strict it is. Like they've mm -hmm. put us on salaries and dividends pays every single month. And like, that's what we get to spend. That's what we get to have. Like we have like, oh, we have a, we have a fund. We have a car fund. Like we're not, I'm like, not gonna say we're limited because obviously we could go grab whatever the fuck we wanted. But like, it's, it's put us in that mindset of that way. And like, we don't even probably touch, like I think we did it the other day um, with our accountant and technically at this point, we cannot make another dollar and sustain companies for the next four years. So Incredible. every one of our employees would still get paid. And like, it's not just like, we have full life insurance, full health insurance, dental, eye, everything for all our employees, everything. And we can maintain that for four years without making a single dollar. That's a ton of runway. Incredible. And so, a ton of and so like, that's like, yeah. that's our goal is we want to leave legacies and we want to build that. And we want to show other people like, now don't be wrong, that might not be for everybody. That might not be what people want or mm -hmm. need. So like do your own thing. I'm not telling you that, but like learn that there is a way to, to build a legit business that can also make your life easier. Yeah. Because I don't think if you have to go out there and get a sign up, I promise you, like, that's not fun. For sure. I think people who are listening to this should be aiming for more in their life. I don't think anyone should be listening to a conversation with this high level of, of you know, of thought without really thinking to themselves, maybe I can do that too. Yeah. And I don't want people watching this and being like, yeah, you know, I like that part where he said making two grand a month. Like that's not this podcast at all. Yeah, no. We are, I'm getting signaled behind the camera that we are a little short on time. Is there anything that you guys want to leave traders with before we hop off? Somebody's going to have to close out of this video and go do something with their life right after this. So what should they be doing with their life after this to get closer to their goals and maybe have an office like this, cars hanging off the side of the thing, brand new Rolls Royces and whatnot. So um, what advice would you guys give? I mean, I feel like we all look at the statistics and some people are either overwhelmed by it or some people are fueled by it. And I know for Division One, it was like 0.01% of people get full rides. And so when I saw trading over 90% of people failed, I was like, that's actually, that eight to 9% looks lit. I'm like, that's, a, that's, that's massive. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you look at Anthony's world, he's a, a one of one, he's a 0.01 a, a percenter. And so the key is to, for everyone watching is like, you don't have to think that you're gonna go do what he's doing. We get these people don't come along every day, but even if you can be a part of that 8% and you start to make two, $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month. Like, like he said, you know, don't try to fulfill your life with the wrong things. If you're making that kind of money, that's still good money. You can still work your job. You can still make money trading. You can still have other hustles and businesses. And I know he's very passionate about a lot of other stuff outside of trading. So keep in mind, trading is just going to fuel and give you the actual resource to then go do the things that cause God has called you to do. So that, that's all I would tell him, bro. Tra trading is the vehicle. It's the vehicle. It's mm. the vehicle. And like that's, I'm not passionate about trading. Like I've taught this, I've pretty much been like, fuck Forex, like I hate trading. Like I don't teach people, I don't like teaching. Anthony gets up on stage signals. at the summit, the first thing he says is, I don't even like trading. <laughs> I, I, I fucking hate it, confused. I hate it. But like at the end of the day, like I understand it. Mm. Like, but like that's also what makes me really good mm. is because I'm not attached to it. I could like trading could go away tomorrow, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still right here. I'm still gonna build the same amount of businesses. I'm still gonna build the same companies and everything like that. So, um, 
don't be attached to it, but but go into it with the mindset of like, I, like you can do it. Like like that's my biggest belief is you can do it, guys. I'm a high school dropout, mm. 16 years old, maybe 15. I'm really bad at math. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but like like I'm a high school dropout. Like didn't finish shit. Mm. Like never read a fucking book. Like I've like one. I've listened to one book. Like that's pretty much it. Okay, you can do it. Like just put your mind to it. Put the fucking work in. Like, don't, I'm not saying don't take advice from all these gurus, but like, get, like at the end of the day, the person that's going to make it is the one that's consistent, staying with it and just keeps going. There's no secret code. There's no, there's no secret to success. Just fucking keep going and know that it's going to happen for you and just make it happen. That's the only way you're going to be successful is if you just make it happen. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up another incredible episode of the Expert Trader podcast series. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything else that we can really add to that. Gentlemen, I appreciate you. Anthony, thank you for the hospitality. Absolutely. Thank you for letting the team in this office. It was incredible. It was an incredible experience. We're about to go do the Arizona workshop. I'll see you guys there. Check out the video in the description below. See you guys later. And get funded. Get funded, baby. Oh. Get funded. Get and get top tier funded. All right, everybody, we just saw some incredible traders here at the FIP Compound. Make sure that you guys grab your tickets to the FX Summit 2023 conference if you want to meet all these incredible traders, if you want to meet myself and learn from the best. So we'll see you guys, fxsummit2023.com.